What's up America? Neil here from Jogger Firearms Academy. Today we're going to talk about how does dry fire practice relate to actually live fire. I talk a lot about dry fire practices. If you've been in any of my classes you know I'm a big proponent of that. But how does it actually relate? So that's what we're going to talk about. So what we're going to do today is I am going to take a magazine that's going to be randomly loaded with snap caps that obviously won't go off along with actual live fire. And this is something that you can do at the range as well. So what we're trying to do today is actually see that when I get to the snap cap where the round doesn't go off and I'm of course I have no idea when that's going to be what I'm trying to prevent is that dreaded muzzle drop that anticipation of the shot so if I'm doing things properly whether the round goes off or not I should have a nice steady pull of the trigger and my muzzle should remain level so let's see what happens okay so here we are ready to go we're loaded up we have the random order of snap caps to rounds. And so what I'm going to do is not tactical, it's not a self-defense scenario. I'm going to go very slow, very precise. I'm going to walk you through everything that I'm going to be doing verbally, just as an overall fundamental review as well. No sense in wasting a, a good training opportunity. All right, so I've established a good grip here. I've got a nice comfortable stance. I'm going to come out to my target. Get my sights on the target. I'm lining up uh, my front, I mean my rear sights and my front sights. I'm focused on my front sight. I'm going to go ahead and take the slack out of the trigger and break the shot. Reset my trigger. Again, focus on the front sight. Break my shot. Focus on the front sight. Oh, there's my first uh, snap cap. Now, as you notice, there was no big dip here. But let's not waste an opportunity for a practice. So, just as it was in real life, if that were to happen, as I tilt my gun back, I can see that the chamber is closed. So I'm going to go to my standard default of tap, rack. I'm going to come back out. Again, getting my trigger ready, lining up my sights, focused on my front sight, slowly taking the slack, letting the shot break. Once again, lining up my sights, focused on my front, take the slack out trigger, and bang, nothing. I bring it back, tap, rack again, come back out. Line up my sights, front sight, take the slack out of the trick. There's my second shot. And one more. And, oh, we're out. So there you go. And I go to lock back. What is it that we want to take away from this demonstration? Well, first off, what we want to do, we're talking about dry fire practice that I preach on so much, is understand the relationship of working this trigger, lining up our sights, and doing the fundamentals but doing it under no stress where the shots are nice and clean. We have no anticipation, we're not worried about the gun going off, and we, we produce quality muscle memory so that when we go to the range and we're shooting live rounds, wherever that will be, the shots are going to be nice and smooth, just like you practiced a million times before. So that's what I want to demonstrate today. Whether there's a live round in there or not, we're going to control the pistol and we're going to work our fundamentals like we've learned. Hopefully this ties us all together. Why are you doing dry practice and how does it relate to actual live fire? So now you can kind of see the culmination of that coming together in real life. So I hope you like what you see. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. I always appreciate that. And if you want to see more of these videos, go ahead and subscribe below. Until next time, remember, it's always better to be judged by 12 than carried by 6.